Astronomers find super-Earth exoplanet is one of the most massive ever discovered. Most massive rocky planet yet. Astronomers have discovered the heaviest planet, yet that's predominantly rocky, a hefty body 17 times more massive than Earth. Called Kepler 10c, the planet orbits a star that is similar to the Sun, though nearly twice as old and located about 560 light-years away in the constellation Draco. The exoplanet, which has been dubbed a mega-Earth, could be the first of a new class of massive rocky planets found at more distant orbits from their stars, said the astronomers who announced their discovery this week at the American Astronomical Society meeting in Boston. Kepler-10 weighs as much as Neptune. But while Neptune has a radius about 3.9 times wider than Earth's, Kepler-10t has a radius only 2.3 times bigger. For a planet to be so compact and heavy, it must be primarily made of rock, the scientists reason. Welcome to the Space Gaze. Before we proceed, kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated when we release new videos. Without further delay, let's dive in. Astronomers assume that rocky planets are necessary for habitability, since any life would likely need to have evolved near a solid surface. The discovery of a massive rocky planet like Kepler-10c increases the number of planets out there, which could be potentially habitable, explained one member of the research team. Dimitar Sasilov of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Finding a rocky planet of such a massive size was not the biggest surprise, though, said Xavier Dumusk of Harvard-Smithsonian, who led the research. The surprise is that there is no gas around it. Planets are born from the disk of gas and dust that surrounds an embryonic star. A body is massive, as Kepler-10t has so much gravity that it should have collected enough hydrogen and helium to turn into a giant gas planet, like Jupiter. It's very difficult to put together a large solid planet like this without accreting even a small amount of hydrogen and helium, which is there in the disk, Sasilov explained. The Kepler Space Telescope detected the planet in 2011, along with its companion, Kepler-10 bits, which was the first confirmed rocky planet found outside the solar system. Astronomers could use data from Kepler to measure the planet's radii, but they could only get a rough estimate of the planet's masses. To better determine how heavy the planets are, Dumusk, Sasilov, and their colleagues used the Galileo National Telescope in the Canary Islands to measure how fast the planets were orbiting their star. From the speeds, the researchers deduced what the masses were, and that the planets must be made of rock. The diversity of planets. Kepler-10c is certainly interesting and appears to be an outlier for now but it may not be that bizarre. Something on the order of the mass of Neptune, and that is rocky with metallic material and perhaps a thin veneer of a hydrogen and helium atmosphere that doesn't seem outside the realm of reasonable possibility, said Gregory Laughlin of the University of California, Santa Cruz, who is not involved in the finding. This planet, officially named Kepler-10c, scrambles the equations that dictate how massive a rocky planet can be without ballooning into a Jupiter-like gas giant. The theorists didn't see this coming. The orthodoxy was that, beyond about 10 Earth masses, a planet would hold on to so much hydrogen gas that it would become like Jupiter or Saturn. Kepler 10c suggests that plus sized planets can stay rocky, with clearly defined surfaces, rather than becoming gaseous and bloated. That means there's more real estate out there for life as we know it on Earth. Kepler 10c is also very old, having formed about 11 billion years ago less than 3 billion years after the birth of the universe. Rocky worlds weren't believed to have existed that long ago. Nature will do what she wants, regardless of earthling theorists, said Sarah Seeger, a Massachusetts Institute of Technology planetary scientist who was not involved in the new discovery, but said by email that she finds it incredibly exciting. There are a number of conceivable ways to create a planet like Kepler-10c, said Jack Lassauer of the NASA Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, California, who also wasn't a part of the team. The planet could have resulted from the collision of two smaller bodies that didn't have much gas to begin with. Or all of the gas in the embryonic star's disk may have somehow dissipated quickly before the planet had time to accumulate any. But calling Kepler-10c rocky, or even a mega-Earth, is a little misleading, since it's nothing like Earth, Lassauer noted. I would call it a rock-rich world, he said. Although the planet is made nearly entirely of rock, there may be enough surrounding gas to create extreme pressures at the planet's surface, he explained. This is an important discovery, Lissauer said, because it shows how diverse planets can be. Kepler-10c, 
which orbits a star 560 light-years away in the constellation Draco, isn't likely to harbor life. It is too close to the parent star, and the surface is thoroughly roasted. Gravity at the surface is nearly three times that of Earth. If there were creatures somehow bounding around, they would probably be rather squat. The planet is 2.3 times the diameter of Earth, but is much denser, particularly toward the core. It's still rock, but it's rock that's twice as dense as the rock we're used to, said Dimitar Sasilov, a professor of astronomy at Harvard University and a co-author of the paper describing the mega Earth. The Kepler telescope, launched in 2009, has found the faint signatures of thousands of planets, though some need additional observation before their discovery can be confirmed. The telescope examines a relatively small patch of the sky, taking images of stars and looking for periodic dimming of the starlight. If that dimming follows a regular pattern, it may be from a planet repeatedly passing across the face of the star as seen from the telescope. Ground-based telescopes have followed up the Kepler leads and gathered new details about these planets. After the Space Telescope found Kepler-10c, a telescope on the ground measured its mass and discovered that it is a giant, rocky world. It now appears that planets are extremely abundant. Virtually every star may have at least one planet, but the habitability of these worlds remains a mystery. No one has found an exact Earth twin, a rocky, Earth-sized world orbiting a sun-like star in the habitable zone. One bullet in Monday from the American Astronomical Society meeting in Boston offered a reminder that there are a lot of ways a planet can prove inhospitable to life. The space weather, for example, might be ghastly. Astrophysicist Ofer Cohen of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics modeled the environments of three candidate planets identified by the Kepler telescope, each apparently rocky like Earth, and orbiting their stars in what is deemed the habitable zone. That's the region in the Goldilocks position, not so close to the star that the planet gets baked, and not so far away that water at the surface would probably be frozen. All three of those parent stars studied by Cohen and his colleagues are common red dwarfs, also known as M dwarfs, which account for about seven of every ten stars in our galaxy, but not our sun, which is a larger yellow dwarf. The habitable zone of these small stars is relatively close, but that brings into the equation another factor the stellar wind, the particles streaming from the star's surface. Cohen concluded that the stellar wind probably would have stripped away the atmospheres of these planets. These planets don't reside in a vacuum, Cohen said. They reside in a medium that has a continuous flow of particles, mostly protons, that are emitted by the star. This is what happened to Mars, he said. Long ago it had a protective magnetic field, as does Earth, and it held on to its atmosphere in the face of the solar wind. But Mars then lost its magnetic field, and solar winds stripped away the Martian atmosphere, he said. This new research might alter the strategy of astronomers, looking for truly Earth-like planets in habitable zones. Maybe we should not focus on M dwarfs, even though those are so common, Cohen said. Maybe we should focus on the more sun-like stars. That's all I have for you guys for today. If you liked watching this video, please make sure to click the like button. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that you may be notified when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.